Welcome back to the Crochet Crowd as well as my friends over at Yarnspirations.com. We have on crest of wave crochet shawl. So what we have here is a really amazing shawl that grows out really quite interestingly. It's actually not that hard to be able to follow but you will need to have a bit of um, pattern reading skills in order to do this. So this is an intermediate level. I'm going to demonstrate on the stitch work in order to get it to, to go so far but once we get to a certain point I'm gonna leave the rest for you. But I have got you some information in order to for you to see the consistencies for this particular pattern. So let's dive a little bit harder into this. So when we're looking at this we're actually looking at three different colors uh, that are working out. So it's hard to tell. I can only really see two in this. But we have like the striping color. So you have two rows of A, two rows of B and etc. And these form the stripes for this whole thing. So when we're going to start off there's gonna be a lot of written words. That's because of how complex the sweeping is. That doesn't mean that it's hard though. So don't give up on it so far. So what we have on page number three is a crochet diagram that's available to you. This is showing rows number one through 12. Now they're showing this but they're not actually showing you the growth as the next part of this. So I actually dove into this even harder because I was like reading the pattern. I'm like okay I see more than just these dips in the pattern when I go to look at it. So how is that being achieved? So that's gonna be our question that I have for you now and I'm gonna demonstrate that in a particular diagram next. So here's a blow up of the diagram. I just did a screenshot of it and I just got it bigger. So what I realized is that row 13 looks very similar to row number three. So it's actually being carried over. The difference is is that row number 13 creates an additional wave. So do you see how we start number three and we start this wave? So there's this wave doesn't exist before this point. See it's right here. So what's gonna happen is in row number 13 this instruction here is very very similar to what we're seeing over here. So we're just going to start number 13 and begin to start a wave just a few stitches in and then that will get a new ripple to start and there's also a new wave starting up here. So when you're done row number 13 on the one side you're not only gonna have one dip but you're actually gonna be starting a dip of another one and another one. So you'll have three dips. So let's take a look at this other example. So I took a screenshot of the the wave here and I counted out the stitches. So in row number 13 and 23 and 33 is when new ripples are going to start. So in row number 13 we see that we're gonna create this wave here and we're gonna start one here. And these two here if you follow it out, see it follows it out and creates a new wave. So when we started see this wave and this wave it's already in but then we're creating a new one. And so when you get to here in row number 23 you're starting a new section here and here and a new wave is forming and then finally in the very last uh, 33, um, 33rd row we're starting a new wave that's just about to begin and then we finish off on uh, row number 33. So what I'm, my, my, what my point being to you is that it's really not that hard but once you start seeing the waves and the dips and, and etc. it's actually not that hard. So it's just a matter of getting those. So you're gonna want me to and you'll probably leave a comment you should have filmed the whole thing. I don't need to because the fact is is that once I can get you to see how this is gonna grow and then you just work your stitch work out the difference is, is that there's just more repeats in order to get to the center point. So what we're going to do next is that we're gonna get ourselves started and we're going to begin. So we're gonna do this slowly as possible and we're gonna start with the foundation row. So this is starting off here. Now the way that this is drawn it's easier for them to show this than it is to compact it. So they have the stitch work looking like it's really quite special but it's really not. It's just a matter of just a demonstration of a diagram. So let's begin and it's a five and a half millimeter size uh, uh, eye crochet hook today and it's using Karen Simply Soft and I think it was Soft Speckled is what they were asking for us to do. Soft Speckle and there is three colors if you wish. I'm gonna be using the same color throughout just for tutorial reasons. A lot of people get confused when I start switching out colors. So I'm just gonna keep the same color going and then we're going to begin and start with the beginning chain in just a moment. So take a deep breath, put on the cowpin and cuddle and let's begin. You will need some place markers for this as well and we'll cover that when we get there. So let's start with the beginning chain using the color A. As I said I'm using the same color throughout. So you just put it onto your size I, five and a half millimeter hook and I need you to chain 20. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 
17, 18, 19, and 20. So we're going to begin the foundation row next. As we begin the foundation row we're gonna go down the one side of this and we're gonna hit the very last stitch and then we're gonna circulate around that. So the last stitch here is gonna have five half double crochets. I want you to put in a place marker in the third one of the fifth and we're gonna turn this chain upside down and come along the other side and fill it in with half double crochets. And what I'd recommend is that you do verify that you have 39 half double crochets at the end of this row. So it's considered a row we're not going in around. We're just getting ourselves started. So let's begin. To begin we're gonna go third chain from the hook. So one, two, and three. And just turn it over and get the back hump of the chain. And I want you to half double crochet. And I want you to continue to half double crochet in each all the way to the end of this chain and the very last chain we're gonna put five half double crochets and that's where I'm gonna see you in just a few moments. So I'm coming to the last chain now and I'm gonna put in five. So watch what I do. So I'm gonna say, I'm just gonna start counting. So one and then two and then three and this third one that I just did I want to place in a stitch marker there. So just slide it up underneath. You can use something that's plastic if you wish. I just use spare yarn. Just pull it through so you got it through the third one and continuing along into that same one you wanna do four and five. So that indicates the point. So starting in the very next stitch right here you're just going to half double crochet. I would recommend going up over top of that straggler catch it underneath then you don't have to sew that in later and half double crochet yourself all the way back to the beginning and we're not gonna form a circle so we're not gonna turn the corner to go around. We're just gonna stop. I want you to verify that there's gonna be 39 half double crochets and just uh, do a quick count before you move on into row number one. So now I just come to the very end of this and I counted. I have my 39 stitches. This chain space that we skipped over does not count as a stitch so don't count that. And this here is on the 20th stitch and that was the fifth, that was the third one of the grouping of five and then I came around. So I technically now have 39 and I'm ready to move on. So we're gonna turn and work and now the center is complete and now we're gonna begin some fun stuff. So let's begin row number one. So we're gonna begin row number one and we're gonna be chaining five which will count as a double treble. Now these double trebles take longer to make but the distance of the, of the width of how fast this thing will grow is based on that. So when we're doing that we're just going to put a lot in the first one and then we're gonna start jumping st uh, stitches in order to form this semicircle. And then once we get to a certain point which is the one just before the one that's marked you'll have your five in there. You'll do your marked one which is a double treble, chain two, double treble and it's saying to keep moving that stitch marker up so you can see it. These waves can get can, can, kind of confusing of where they are so if you put that in there it'll be easier for you. And then you're gonna come down the other side just exactly doing the mirror of one side to the other. Let's begin row number one. So let's begin row number one. We're going to chain five which will count as a double treble and in the same one the very beginning that straight down in you're gonna put six double trebles in there. So let's just put six. So you're gonna wrap the hook three times for a double treble. So with the beginning chain five and the six that you just created you should see seven posts all together. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So we're going to now move down and continue along. So we're going to put in one double treble into the next stitch. Just like that. So that was in the next. And then what we need to do is that we need to skip a certain amount of stitches. So we need to have so many of these that are on their own. So let me just take a quick pause and I'll be right back. So I just had to take a quick count on the diagram. So this one here 
and plus the others that we're gonna do will count as one of nine for this particular row. So you're just gonna do a double treble again but you're gonna skip the next stitch and put a double treble in the one after that. And you wanna do this so that you have nine of these posts that'll be by themselves so don't include that one that's got all of it in the same. So there's now officially two. So I'm gonna quieten down just double treble and just skipping a stitch as you're going and I want to see nine of those posts. So I now officially have nine in there. You can see it's wanting to pull because we are skipping stitches but not up here. So now the very next stitch that you want to apply into here is going to be five double trebles into the next one and that's gonna be the one just before the stitch marker. Okay, so that's just the one before the end. So let's put five into this one. Okay, once you put five into the next one there, the next one is the center point. So the next one is gonna be a double treble, chain two, double treble, so one double treble, chain two, and one double treble. And before you move on, I would recommend that you move that stitch marker. So just slipping into a chain two spot and just grab that straggler of the stitch marker and just pull it through so it's resting. You'll pull that out eventually at the end. So now it's there and you'll see it again in the future. And now we're gonna go down the opposite side. So we're gonna do exactly the opposite to what we just did. So starting in the very next stitch, I want you to apply five double trebles. Now I've just come all the way here and I've done my five. So this side is exactly the opposite to what we just did. So the very next stitch that we're about to do is a double treble by itself. So that's considered one of nine. So then like before, skip a stitch and then put a double treble in the next. So I wanna see nine of those posts sitting by itself before you move on. So I'm just gonna quieten down and uh, I, won't <laughs> I won't be yapping. So here we go. So just make sure you get nine.
So I now have officially have my nine in there. I have been counting but I will double check just to make sure. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. And so I have one stitch left and that is going to be a total of seven double trebles into the very last stitch. And that will conclude off then row number one. So I'll do my seven. Okay, so my seven are now complete. So this is kind of what it looks like at this moment and it's pretty awesome and if you wanna change the colors I've decided I'm going to actually just for the fun of it. And so I'm going to move on to row number two and the wonderful thing about row number two, four, six, eight and etc. they're pretty much all the same. So let's continue on to row number two. So let's take a look in rows number two, four, six and etc. all the even numbers are always the same. There are front post half double crochet so each one of the stitches gets something so you don't need to count. The only times you have to pay attention is it even or sorry is an odd number like one, three, five and etc. So that's one of those things that every other row is a non-thinker in that sense. So when we're looking at this when we completed off row number one, row number one, three, five and etc. is the right side of the project. So when you're looking at the model you're looking at the right side. So these half double crochet front posts are completed on the wrong side and when you do that it's creating those ridges that you see on the models example. So let's begin row number two and then it's the same as going as four, six, eight and etc. working its way out. Let's begin. So let's begin row number two. Just turn our work. So row number two, four, six and etc. are all gonna be the same. So you're gonna chain up two and that does not count as anything in this particular pattern when you chain two like that. And in the very first stitch right here you're going to apply three half double crochets. So one, two and three. So you should know that the very first stitch and the last stitch are just into the regular stitch work as well as into the point it's into the chain space but everything else in between is a half double crochet front post. So wrap in the hook. What you want to do is that you want to go into the front post. So in to the post and out the other side pull through and then pull through all three. So wrap and in pull through pull through all three. And so I'm not counting. I don't need to and I'm just going to make my way to the point. I'll see you there in just a moment to make sure that you are turning properly and you'll wanna move up your stitch marker as well. So I just did the last here front post half double crochet. This is here is the point. It's been marked. So I'm gonna put in two half double crochets right into the space and then chain two and then two half double crochets into the same space. And I will want to move that stitch marker up so that I can see it once again in the future. So just grabbing that stitch marker, pull through and just let it rest in there. So continuing down the other side just starting on the front post, half double crochet again and keep on going. And I'll see you at the end of this row and the very last one will have three half double crochets but I'll show you that just to make sure. So coming up to the end of row number two, the very last turning chain right into the chain itself not into a space apply three half double crochets. So one, two and three. So this every um, time you do two rows like this in a row that's the end of a color repeat. So what I can do then at this point is that I can get rid of this color and I'm gonna just have some fun and just change it. And so I'm just going to pull it through and what I would want to do is that I'll show you how I'm gonna do that. I'm going to just fasten this off. So I'll only show it to you one time. So I'm just going to take it. Now this is the back side of the project so favor the back side of the stitch work. So don't let that needle really hit the front side at all. So just pull through once. And make sure you don't distort the shape. And pull through. 
and I like to weave in my ends as I go because it's just at the end of the project I'm just so excited about it I just don't want to deal with it. <laughs> okay so we can do that and that's awesome. So now I'm going to turn it over and then we'll begin row number three next and this is what it looks like so far. So it looks a bit distorted. It will grow out and this is awesome. So let's begin. So when you're looking at it from this perspective you'll see that row number three that we're about to start is starting to create a new wave based on this one here. And so you'll see that happening. Okay so the new wave is then beginning and then we're going to sink down underneath here. So what I did it here is that I took a quick pause if you noticed and I counted how many of these are by itself. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. Huh, it's 9. So these 9 if I know that I can skip stitches without having to count excessively. I wonder if it's the same. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. Huh, there you go. So that seems like that's a consistent thing when you're going down to sink. So after I get my 9 done I'm then going to put in 5 here just like it was here but then there's more stitches to work with before you get to the point and then this side is the opposite to what you see. So it's really not that hard uh, when you look at it from spec. I'm really quite curious now. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. Huh. So it is gonna be the same. So that's awesome. So every time there's a dip like that it's gonna be easier to, to know that in advance. So let's begin row number 3. So looking at the right side we want to begin and I'm just going to attach a new color and we're going to begin row number 3. So just slip stitch it to attach it and I wanna make sure I'm getting into the right stitch when I'm doing this. So let's begin. We're going to start row number 3. So we're gonna chain a total of 5, 1, 2, 3, 4 and 5. And in the same one just directly below you're going to put in two more trebles or double trebles sorry. If I say treble it's double treble. Okay so there should be with that chaining of 5 plus these 2 you should count a total of 3. Do you see that? So let's uh, continue along. So I'm gonna leave the straggler down so it gets stuck underneath and the next um, 3 stitches will be by itself. They're all double trebles. So 1, 2, 3. And then after that we're going to create that new wave that's going to form. So the new wave here as we begin the next stitch is gonna have 5 double trebles. So I'll, I'll be quiet as I do it. So do 5 of them in the next. So now I'm going to go into the next stitch after these 5 are done and this is gonna be 1 of 9. So starting in the next stitch so there's 1 of 9 and then I skip a stitch and then double uh, trouble into the next after that. So I want you to get, keep doing that. So skipping those stitches and make sure that you can see 9 by itself. So I'll be quiet as I do it. So I officially have my 9 in. So then after I have my ninth one in the very next stitch here is going to have 5 double trebles into the same stitch. So I'll do that quietly. So 
So I have my five in there but you can see that the point is still over here. So you can tell that I have more stitch work to do. So in the next three stitches which is the only stitches that are left here there's gonna be one double treble in each. So count those out. I'll count those. So one, two, and three. And now the point is next. You can see that with the stitch marker. So it's nice that that's in there, right? So we're in the point. It's going to always be the same when you're doing these double trebles. So there's gonna be two double trebles first into the space. Chain two and two double trebles into the same space. When you get that done, move that stitch marker up so you can see it again in the future. And now we're gonna do the other side opposite to what we just did. So let's turn. So we're gonna go and in the first three stitches that you will have, you will put in three, uh, sorry one treble, a double treble into each. So one, two and three and then the next one is gonna be five double trebles into the same one And once those five are in, starting in the very next stitch it's gonna be by itself. So we'll do that first just and then we'll talk. So this is considered, this one by itself is one of nine. So then that one plus then the other eight. So you'll skip one and double trouble in the next and etc. just like you did before. So I want you to have nine standalone double trebles and I'll do that quietly going forward. So this is number three. This is the ninth. I will double check just to make sure. It is. So once that ninth one is in, then you're going to apply five double trebles into the next stitch. So you have five into there. So the next three stitches are going to be by itself. So I'll count those out as we do it. So we one, two, and three. And you have one stitch left right there. And that's going to be three double trebles to conclude off this row. And that's it. So let's just zoom you out a little bit. So you just gotta shape it as you're just getting out. So you it'll work out once you're just getting out a little bit further. And that's awesome. So this is the end of row number three. And then row number four, six, eight, and etc. are all the same. 
is what you already know which will create this line. Let's begin to do row number four next. As we begin row number four, it's like what we know before. I don't have to be so slow about it uh, teaching wise because it's the same as what you already know. So you're gonna chain two, one and two and in the very first one here it's three half double crochets. So the very first one and the very last one will have three half double crochets in them. Now the rest of these will be a front post half double crochet starting in the very next one and when you get to the point don't forget it's two half double crochets, chain two, two half double crochets and those are normal and you'll turn and you'll continue to do the, fr uh, the front post half double crochets. So this is and then when you get to the very last one it'll be three half double crochets into the regular uh, turning chain and I'll see you there and this is row number four. So I'm at the end of number four. I put three half double crochets in the end. This is where you would change the color if you want to and I'll see you back here in just a moment as we continue into row number five. So let's begin row number five. So in row number five we're going to start up, chain up five and then put two more into the beginning. So you're gonna see that that's consistent throughout the whole thing. So now this time instead of just three by itself there's gonna be a total of seven and then we're going to do that half semi like the half moon shape. So there's five into the next and then there's nine and then you got that five into the next and then there's seven. So just remember it's seven and seven. Last time it was three and three and if you can remember that it's easy. Let's begin row number five. Let's begin row number five. I'm just joining a new color, a different shade of blue and I'll just going to slip stitch it to attach it and then chain up five. So one, two, three, four and five. Now in the same one you wanna put two more double trebles in there. So with the chaining of five and these two double trebles that gives you a total count of three. So now we're just gonna just match stitch to stitch. So starting in the next one you're gonna do seven double trebles in a row. So let's just do that in a row. So I'm not gonna skip any stitches. So that's one of seven and I'm gonna quiet down and do the rest. Okay, once you have your seven in a row, the next one is gonna be five into the next one. So let's just do that. And you'll count those out in your head or out loud. I can't hear you, it's all good. and I have five into this one. So over the next, starting in the very next one, let's just do that first and then yeah, betcha. Okay, so that's one of nine. So starting and skipping the next one, just continue to do that. So keep skipping just one and I wanna see nine of these solos by itself. So this is considered number two of nine because the first one already went in. And so I'll just quiet down again. I believe I have nine. Just gonna double check. One, two, three, four. Okay, so I have nine. Starting in the very next stitch I wanna put five into the same one. So you can do that as well. So count those. 
Okay, this is the fifth one going in. And now we have to do a total of seven coming after this. So it's just seven in a row. So starting in the very next stitch. And my seventh is in. Okay, I'm just gonna double check. Yes. Now in the chain two spot, you're gonna do what you already know. So two double trebles, chain two, two double trebles. Once you get that done, just move up your stitch marker so you can see it for next time. And now let's go down the opposite side. So the opposite side starting in the very next stitch is gonna be seven in a row. Seven double trebles. So count those. And then once your seven are in, the next one is five into the same one. I'm gonna verify. Yes. Okay, it's gonna be five into the next one. So now that those five are in, put one double treble into the next and that's considered one of nine. So then skipping the next stitch, double treble into the next. So I wanna see nine double trebles sitting by themselves. So we're technically on number two of nine. So please do that, making sure you're skipping. Once I have verified I have my nine, the next one is gonna be five double trebles into the same one. Please count those. And now the next seven in a row are each gonna be one trouble by itself, so please count those.
and in the very final stitch there's gonna be three treble trebles into those so please count those. So that's it for that round. That's round number, or sorry, that's row number five. So you can really start to see it shaping. It's now sitting better as well. So let's turn our work and begin row number six, which is the, what we already know. So turn your work and let's do row number six. You already know it. It's the half double crochet front post. Remember the first three. So chain two, the first three are into the same one. They're into a regular stitch. So they're all half double crochet. So one, two, and three. And then it's front post half double crochet for all the ones. And then the point is two half double crochet, chain two, two half into the point. Then continuing along and then the very last stitch will have three half double crochets into the stitch, into the turning chain. Do that and this is row number six and I will see you at the beginning of row number seven. Let's begin row number seven. So in row number seven we're going to start off there three will be in the beginning. So the chain five plus the two more will be your three. And then we're going to immediately start making space. So this is a dipping that's gonna happen. So it's just like what we have over here with the nine. We're just going to start it here so that it can be prepared and by the time you get to row number thirteen the nine will be existing over here somewhere. Okay, right over there. So we're, we're going to get ourselves starting in the dipping motion. So we're gonna have one, two, three, four, five. So we're gonna have five there. Let me just look up. So we have one, two, three, four, five. So we got five there and one, two, three, four, five. So we got five. So five is pretty much the answer to that. And so you're going to notice is that as we go into row number seven when you follow it around after you get beyond this one there's now going to be a new grouping of five here which will help it uh, give it the shape and then you'll have the grouping of five. So one, two, three, four, five. Yep that's right. So these are gonna be your fives. So once you get back to row number thirteen which is the similar to row number three you're going to notice that these fives will then eventually turn into nines. So you'll have nine, nine, and nine and that's how you're gonna get that shape to grow out in order to have that. So let's begin to do and do it slowly row number seven. Let's begin to do row number seven. We're gonna chain up five. I'm trying not to speak so much. I know this is gonna be a very long tutorial so um, it's just easier for my closed captioning team to uh, CC a video when I'm not speaking so much on a long video like this. So you got three into the first one. Now we're going to immediately start and we're gonna start a dipping motion. So the very next one is gonna be one double treble. So that will be considered one of five. So skipping one and going to the one after that. So this will be two of five. So what I want you to do is that I want you to see five of these by itself. So this is considered number two. Okay, so you have that so you can see five by itself. So after you get that five done we're immediately then going to start and in the very next two of those there are gonna be five double crochets in each. So let's start in the first one and do five into this one. So I'll count those out quietly. So there's one grouping of five and in the very next one you wanna do another grouping of five.
Okay, so you got the five and five. So there's two fives in a row. So now starting in the next one you'll put one double treble by itself. And this is considered one of nine. So that's one and then skipping the next one. Then do the second and I'll quiet down and make sure you get nine that are by itself with those ones skipping in between. So once you have your next set of nine in there, so one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So the one right after the ninth one will be five double trebles into the same one. I'll count those quietly. So once the first group of, of fives in, the very next stitch after that is going to be five as well. So put those in. And now we're gonna do some dipping motion. So put in a double treble into the next one. So that will be considered one of five. And then skipping the next stitch. Double trebles and this is two of five. So I want you to have five that are sitting by itself with those spaces in between. Okay, once you get that done, number seven, I'm just taking a look at the diagram here. So I have this. So there's only one stitch pretty much that we have. So after you have the group of five, so one, two, three, four, five. So you're just gonna double treble into the very next stitch. And then you're into the space. So the spacing will just be what you already know. It's gonna be a double treble twice. So two of those. Chain two and two more double trebles into the point. And then start going down the other side. Let's go down the other side. So the first one out of the corner is gonna be one treble, double treble sorry. And now the next one is gonna be parting of a group of five which will create the dip. So this is one of five. Skip one. This is two of five and do the rest and I'll do it quietly.
So my five are in. There's my five. And now in the next two, I wanna put in five double trebles in each. So I'll do that quietly, both of those. So you got two groups of five. Starting in the next one is a double treble and it's gonna be a dipping motion. So this is one of nine. So let's be, so that's one of nine. Skipping the next one, do two of nine. And get your nine in, making sure the spaces are in between. Once the nine are in, the next two in a row are gonna be five double troubles each. Please do that. So once that's in, the very next stitch is going to be a double treble and that's gonna be grouping of one of five. So it's gonna be starting a dip. So that's one of five, skipping the next one, do two and get all the way to five. Okay, and then once you get that done, then the very next stitch after that is gonna be a double treble. And then you're left with one last one and that'll be three double trebles in that one. And this will conclude off row number seven. There you go, done. So that's what it looks like. You see it's really following the motion awesomely. And let's begin on to row number eight, which you already know. Let's turn our work and begin. Starting row number eight, it's what you know with the half double crochets. So just chaining up two does not count as anything. Put three into the first one, three into the last one, just follow it around. And in the point, as always, two half double crochet, chain two, two half double crochet, move up that um, stitch marker, and this will be row number eight. 
So just making sure that you get things done and I'll see you at the end of row number eight and begin row number nine. So let's begin row number nine. In row number nine we're going to uh, create that dipping motion again but we're just shifting out a little bit further out from the edge. So when we go to start off chain five or to start and then put your two in there so you get your three and then there's gonna be five double trebles in a row. There's technically six but the way that I'm counting it for myself to make sense is that I'm gonna put five and then the next one, two, three, four, five is part of that dipping and that's the way that I'm gonna count it. Then the next uh, stitches after that is going to be two of these just like we did before and then we're gonna start our dipping motion of number nine and then once we come out of that there will be two groups of five and then we're gonna be dipping down for five and then we're going to be completing this at the end. So one, two, three, four, five. So once we get the dipping motion there then there's five by itself and then the, the point. Let's begin row number nine. So let's begin row number nine. You're gonna chain five and then put two more double trebles in this one. Okay, now there's gonna be five double trebles in a row. So just count those quietly. So my five's in. So we're now gonna do the dipping motion for a set of five of those. So starting in the very next one, that is gonna be your first one of five. And then you're gonna skip the next one and then double crochet the next one. So that will be two of five. And please do the rest of these dipping ones. So I have my five in and then the very next one, actually the very next two are each going to have five double crochets in each of those. So please do that. First group of five is done. Do the second group of five and the next one after that. Now we're gonna do a dipping motion for nine. So let's start in the next one. So start in the um, next stitch in order to start that grouping in nine. That's considered one of nine. And then just double trouble skipping one and do this. When you skip just go double trouble the next and make sure you have nine that will stick by itself. So currently I'm at two. Okay, once my nine are in, the next two are going to each be five double, uh, five trouble, double trouble, sorry. Okay, 
and doing the next group of five. Okay, once that grouping uh, is done, then what we just need to do, the next grouping uh, will be a, a dipping of five. So you gotta start the first one first in the next stitch. So that's one of five. And then skipping a stitch. And the next one that's two of five. Please do a total of five. So I now have my group of five there and I'm almost to the point. The very next one after that group of five is a double treble. To conclude that off so that it's that one and then we're going to be just adding the remaining to the point there. So from this point as we see we have a one, two, three, four, five and a total of six. So in a row so you'll have that right there. So this is one, two, three, four, five and six. So you'll be doing that. So just kind of fill in the remaining of the stitches with double trebles. When I said six that includes that last one coming out of the, the dipping if that helps you to know that. Of course I'm gonna be double checking my counts. So there is technically your five. So there's six because there is in a row. Good. So now we're gonna go into a point. So the point is what we already know it. Two treble, chain two, or two double treble, two um, chain, two double treble. That double treble is a mouthful. I keep screwing that up and I do apologize for that. And now we're gonna come down the other side. So let's kick this off down the other side. So what we have starting in the very next stitch is that we are going to put five in a row. Double trebles. Now that the five are in, the next part is gonna be a dipping. So we're gonna start with the very next stitch first and that's gonna be considered one of five. And then just jumping to the next one. So skipping and then jumping. So this is two of five. So do a total of five like that. So my five are in and then the very next stitch that we have here is going to have five double trebles. So do that one. The next one next door will also have that. So please do that as well. So I'll be quiet for all load. Okay, so the two groups of five are done. Then now we're next, we're gonna go into the dipping of nine. So just start in the very next one to start. That's what considered one of nine. And then skipping one and do the next. So that's two of nine.
So there is the nine done. So the very next one out of, out of coming out of this then will be two groups of five double trebles. So do those two groups now. They're five in each. So the two groups of five are now done. So starting in the next stitch put a double treble and you're gonna do that dipping of five only. So that's considered one of five. And now to do the rest of those. So skipping one do the next one. This is two of five. So now that the five is in coming immediately into the next one here then when we go to start and we're going to put in a total of five in a row. So one, two, three, four, five and you have one last stitch left which is what you're looking for and the last one will have three double trebles into the last stitch. And then that's it. This is row number nine. Fun. So let's uh, turn our work and do row number ten. Starting row number 10, you're gonna turn your work and you're now going to just do that half double crochet. Now I noticed on row number 12 is the only time that this changes. I just, I did, um, I almost missed that last time I've done this before. So just chain up two and the first one gets then three half double crochets. So row number 12 is the only time it's not three, it's only two at that point. But everybody, everybody else gets three in, in there. So you're just gonna front post half double crochet all the way to the point. The point is what you know. Two half double crochet, two chain, two half double crochet and front post half all the way back and then put in the turning chain three half double crochet. I'll see you at the end of this row. So I'm taking a quick gander where I am. So I'm on row number 11. I'm about to start row number 11. And so you can see that these are forming. And so when we get to row number 13, which will be after row number 11, um, in this particular concept is that we're going to start then making more of these and then you'll see then the repeat pattern happening from that point. So let's take a look at the diagram and move on now to row number 11. So row number 11 we're gonna start off. We're gonna chain five and then put three into the first one. And then we're going to do a total of nine of these double trebles. And then the dipping is gonna start with the very next one. So there's technically ten in a row but I just say that there's nine because I'm gonna say let's do the dipping. So the dipping starts in the next one and then there will be five of those. And then we're gonna be doing those five uh, double trebles side by side. And then we're gonna be doing the dipping motion of nine. And then we'll be doing this work again the five double troubles in each of the two and then we'll be dipping down for five and then the remaining nine will then be a double trouble and then you back into the point and then you'll do the opposite for the other side. Let's begin row number 11. Let's begin row number 11 chain five and then put two double troubles into the first one. Now there's going to be a total of nine double trebles in a row. So we can count those together if you wish. So one and two and go all the way to nine.
so there should be nine. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So we're gonna start the dipping motion for just only five. So we're gonna start in the very next one. And so that's one of five. And skipping the next one, that's two of five. Please do all the num all to five, please. And once you get that five done, we're gonna start immediately with the two groups of five double trebles. So please do both of those groups. I'm gonna do it quietly. There's one group of five. Let's do another one. Okay, so there's the second group of five. So now we're gonna do the dipping motion for nine. So let's start in the very next one first. So that's one of nine. And then do the skipping one and do the second one over. That's two of nine, please do a total of nine. So my nine are in and then the next two stitches are each five double trebles each. So the five are in. And so now we're gonna do a dipping motion of only five. So starting in the next one to begin that. So that's one of five. The next one is two of, so skipping one, go to the next one, that's two of five. Please do a total of five. So once you have your total of five in there, we're going to then continue the rest here. There should be a total of nine in a row. So just do nine in a row. So starting with one and go all the way to nine.
once your nine are in you're gonna go into the point same as what you already know two treble uh, double trebles chain two two double trebles please do that now Okay, so starting in the next one, we wanna do the first nine by itself. So let's do the first nine. So I'll count those up quietly. Once you have your nine in there, you're going to start the dipping motion. So to do that, you are just going to just start in the next one and it's only dipping down for five. So starting in the next one, that's one of five. Skip in the next one. This is two, please do a total of five. Once you have your five, the very next one after that, the next two actually, are two groups of five double trebles each. So we're gonna move on. So we're gonna start a dipping motion of nine. So just double trouble the next one. That's one of nine. You know what you're doing at this point. Skipping one, do two of nine. Please do a total of nine. once you have your set of nine in the next two are two groups of five double trebles in each. Please do that. My first grouping of five is in. I'll do the second group. Okay, 
Okay, so the next one's in there. So now we're gonna do a dipping. So we're gonna, we're only gonna dip a five. So we're gonna start with the next one. That's considered one of five. Skipping the next one. This is two of five. Please do five. So now that I got my five, I'm going to double treble the next nine. my nine are in. I have one stitch left so it's good. And then the final stitch has three double trebles into it to complete off row number 11. Okay, that's row number 11. And let's turn our work and begin row number 12. As we begin row number 12, you're going to notice is that the first when we go to start, remember chain two does not count as anything. So we're going to just chain two and we're only gonna put two half double crochets into the first one. There's only gonna be two half double crochets into the end one. And there's only gonna be one half double crochet, chain two, one half double crochet into the point. Everything else is just a front post uh, like that and this is in order to keep the balance. So when you're doing row number 12 when you go to repeat it in the future just keep an eye on that. So row number 12 let's begin. Let's begin row number 12 just turn our work. So as I stated just chain two to begin and the first one's only gonna have two half double crochet in there and then the remaining going across to the point is just one front post half double crochet in each so when you get to the point, it's only gonna be one half double crochet and then chain two, one half double crochet and then when you get to the very end, it's just two half double crochets into the turning chain. This is row number 12. Make sure that you are following that count so that you stay in balance in the future. I'll see you at the end of this one and then we'll begin round number, or row number 13. So we just finished row number 12. Now row number 13 and higher, it's just a matter of repeating the steps over and over and over. The difference is that these ripple stitches that we have here are going to uh, continually increase. So as we hit row number 13, we have one dip that's in motion right now. So the 13th will start a new dip closer to the edge, a new dip over here, and this dip will maintain. So every time you do row number 13, you're going to increase the dipping by two. So in the future, you will see that there's three, uh, after we do the next row, there will be then five, and then a very final one will be seven near to the end of the shawl. So what we're going to notice is that this is very similar to how we started off row number three. And so I took a look at the instruction when we did that and I thought okay what is similar to it. So I laid it together. So what I'm about to show you I'm going to provide as a downloadable on the crochetcrowd.com. It's my notes in order for me to teach and I think it would be helpful for you too. So here are my working notes. So I realized that row number 13 and 3 are related to each other. The way that it starts off with putting one double treble into the next three is the same as here. The difference is is that in row number 3 we only had one dip going down. In 13 we're creating two new dips. So we have the existing dip plus two, two more that gives you the count of three times. So what I want you to pay attention to is that this repeating actually makes a lot of sense when we go. So we're gonna do five double trebles into the next stitch and then this one, this set of instruction right here, this big one, is just that dipping of the nine. And then there's gonna be five double trebles into the next and you're gonna do that three times. So once that's done, you'll do it again and then again, just like that. So what I want you to pay attention to is 
how you're repeating that because once you get that the next set of instructions that you have is the same. The difference is is that there is a different count. So one double treble into the next seven. See? Do you see how that's gonna work? So it actually makes a lot of sense when you're looking at it though. So I have all the notes written out for that so that you can clearly see what the differences are so you know how many to do. So as you're getting bigger and bigger you'll notice that the three times will change into five and when you're looking at it from a different perspective then from the end of the pattern. Sorry I covered in paperwork here at my desk. So when you look at the end of the pattern here once you get beyond here once you get to row number 12 uh, 22 it's the same as number 12 which is that special one right here which is the two half double crochets into the end and then it says repeat number 13 noting the repeat is five, five times. That's five dips. Okay so right now you only see one. There will be three in the next cycle but once you get here you're going to create a new dipping so then you'll have five and then you repeat the a second row and then you'll do repeating rows number 15 to 20 second noticing the repeat is the five times which is the five dips and then once you have that repeat row number 23 which is right here which is another 13th row and it says noticing that the repeat is seven times and that's the difference. I'm gonna leave the very last row for you to be able to figure that out on your own because I'm not there in order to get there. So what I want you to do is, is we pay attention into row number 13. You're gonna see how the repeat's gonna work and then it's just gonna build out and hopefully you can catch it from that particular moment. Okay so let's hope we got it and let's try. So we're gonna chain up five which will be your first double treble and then you'll put two more double trebles into the beginning. Now this starts off like number three and then the story then will change. So the next three in a row will each be a double treble. So count those. And now we're going to begin the next set of instructions a total of three times. So we're gonna start off and we're gonna start off with five double trebles into the next stitch. So count those out. I'll count those quietly. So now that my five is in there I'm going to start that nine dip. So starting in the very next stitch put in your one of nine. And then you know what to do at this point. So you're gonna skip the next one and you're going to put two of nine. And I want you to get nine. I'll be quiet now. So I officially have nine. Now do you notice that there is two groups of five double crochets there? We wanna maintain that. So just keep an eye on that. So it's only the first one out that has the half one. So it only has one of them and not two. So we wanna maintain those. So the next two will each be a five, uh, sorry, a five double trebles. Now the first one that you're finishing is gonna be technically the end of the repeat instruction. So the officially start of the next instruction for the repeat is starting in the next grouping of five and hopefully that helps you to know that. I never know what to say in these tutorials because people like you talk too much or you're not saying enough or you know it's hard. Okay so there's one grouping of five. So this grouping of five 
this dipping a nine and this grouping a five is one repeat out of three. So you're gonna do it again. So then the next one is gonna be the other one that you need and it's gonna be five double trebles into the next one. So it's technically the second one in a row. If you're looking at it from a non-repeat point of view. If, but if you looked at this you would have noticed that that is underneath. So it helps you to know what to look for so that you don't have to be excessive obsessive with the instructions. So once that grouping of five is done you're gonna start the next dipping of nine. So just put in a double trouble in the next and that's one of nine. You know what to do. Skip the next one. Double trouble into the next. That's two of nine. Please do nine. This is my ninth one. Okay. So then the one after that is going to be five double troubles. It's important that you count in this particular case. On those half double crochets coming back you don't have to worry about it so much other than row number 12. So you get at least a mental break on the counting in the future. So the first grouping of five is done. So that would be the second repeat. So this five of this half of it, so the five, the nine and this five is the second part of the repeat. So you have to repeat three times. So the very next one is the other half of the grouping of five into the same one. So please do that one. Okay, there's that five and then the dipping of nine starts immediately. So we're just gonna throw in a double trouble into the next. And then skipping one and that's two of nine. Please do a total nine. So that was the final dipping of the nine. That so I just got my nine done just before the point and I am moving into the next one after this and this one will be five uh, double troubles going into the same one. So this is creating that dipping that you need. And then after this one is done there should be three stitches left. One, two and three there is and that means I'm good and I'm just gonna fill the last three in with the double treble in order to get to the corner. So there's the three. So in the point we already know what to do. It's two double treble chain two, two double trouble. Please do that. Okay. 
and now let's go down the other side. So we're gonna do opposite to what we have. So we have to create that dipping motion right off the bat. So the first three coming out of the corner will be just exactly opposite. So it's gonna be three double trebles in a row. And then the next one is gonna be five double trebles on its own. Once that five's in there, we're now gonna dip down the nine to get to the other point. So just look at it coming down, so it's nine. So you're gonna start on the very next stitch and then do your nine. So that's one of nine. Skip in the next one, that's two of nine. Please do nine. Okay, once you have your nine in, which I do, the very next one coming out is going to be five double trebles. So that will complete then one of three repeats that you have to do. So the five double trebles before the grouping of nine that was done and then this one is considered one repeat. So let's do repeat number two in just a second. So starting in the next stitch, you're gonna do five double trebles. like that. So there's five into that one. And then we start another dipping of nine. So starting in the very next stitch, that's one of nine. And then jumping over the next one and do that one. That's two of nine. Please do nine. So there is nine, I'm just making sure one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So the one right after that is going to be the second part finished of the repeat. So repeat number two, there's five in this one. Okay, so that's the end of repeat number two. And then you've gotta repeat it one more time. So starting on the next one, you're gonna put five into the next one.
So I got five in there and then I'm gonna start in the next one to do another nine dip. So starting in that one, skip the next one after that. This is number two of nine, please do nine. Okay, there is your nine. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. And then the next one after this is gonna be five double trebles into the same one. And that will conclude off the final and third repeat. There's your five. So now the next three in a row are each one double treble each to conclude off this edge. And finally the last one here is going to be three double trebles into the last stitch. Okay, so we now just finished row number 13. Let's lay this out and let's talk. Okay, so let's talk stitches. So we just finished row number 13. So we have a portion of a fan here which is the five and then a five here. So you're going to notice is that we created some new dipping that is ready to go completely. So these ones are going to maintain themselves and these ones are gonna start be building out so that you can build it out in the future. So you'll notice in that the next row, row next 15, so we're gonna do row number um, 14 which is just a half double crochet in the front post which you already know. And then what you're going to do in row number 15, you're only gonna still maintain that there will be a five and a five here and then you'll still have your twos here. In row number 17, you're going to notice is that that's when it divides off just like it did in row number um, seven where then this then turns into uh, two groups here. You'll have two groups here and then you still have these two groups and then it's officially growing out and out and out. So what I want you to do at this point if you would like to finish I need you to follow those written instructions at the end. I have provided as much detail as I can with this without actually crocheting the whole thing on camera. I think this is gonna be a very long tutorial. A lot of dead space of air because there's not much to talk about as far as like the instructions. It's pretty much just put your hook into the wind and just uh, do it. And uh, it, once you get started I found with myself is that I, I was able to comprehend this pattern and hopefully I've done an okay job too and you can let me know if I did or not or whatever. <laughs> so have a great afternoon. We, oh, it's afternoon now but have a great day and we hope to see you again real soon. Bye bye.